You are listening live to the VO and Veto Show. Disrespectful to the executive branch. I would remind you that extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. Don't sign the damn deal. And the president won't. Therefore, I do not believe that the majority can vote a man's life or property or freedom away from him. Here on the Vito and Vito Show, I'm Vito. Hey, I'm Vito. We want to welcome everybody to the Vito and Vito Show right here at www.vitoandvito.com. Give us a follow, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Vito and Vito Show. And boy, do we have a show for you lined up, ladies and gentlemen. But before we get started, I want to let everyone know just what they're listening to as my co-host explains a little biography of the Vito and Vito Show. Vito and Vito are bringing you the perspectives of two college-age millennial conservative libertarians out of liberal hellhole Brooklyn, New York, where we're committed to defending the principles of free markets, liberty, and individualism, where we hold no punches here on the show. That's right, no punches here on the show. After this week, Vito, we first got to, because this is going to be a very serious show, and we want to send out our condolences. This has been such an awful week. An awful week to those... In San Bernardino, California, in our thoughts, in our prayers, in our in, in our minds as we reflect on the terrible tragedy. 14 left dead. Yes, Vito? Yes, they were. 14 left dead. And uh, 21 wounded. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's been such an awful week when you think about it. I mean, this, this has become commonplace where we see mm-hmm. mass shootings mm-hmm. and murders and things to this scale where there's been... Well over 100 under Obama's administration. Exactly. More than any other administration that we could possibly put together. More than Reagan, more than Bush, more than Clinton. Combined. Yeah. Not even close. Mm. So there is obviously an issue what is happening. And a lot of these shootings we do see happen to be Mm -hmm. Islamic. Well, well, yeah. Muslims, we see that with a lot of shootings. Mm -hmm. And the last one in San Bernardino over in California, Mm -hmm. um... Just happened, so they're still looking into exactly what happened, what the motives were. But uh, there's already connections. People saying that um, one of the shooters was radicalized, I believe, in Saudi Arabia, Mm -hmm. and that he was having contact Mm -hmm. with somebody overseas, someone who was supposedly a terrorist. So, I mean, when you think about it, this is some scary stuff that's going on. ISIS in our own backyard, ladies and gentlemen. And I mean, we got to start talking about this, Vito. We got to start talking about this right now because it is getting out of control. If this is indeed true to be an ISIS related attack, if this guy was inspired by that sick Islamo Nazi regime, what Islam is behind this, we want to talk about these issues. We also want to talk about this ridiculous notion that the president politicizing a tragedy, not just the president of the United States, ladies and gentlemen, but also, also, the entire Democratic Party, the New York Daily News, politicizing a tragedy, not letting the bodies cool yet, as they are quick to throw out political daggers against those who support the NRA and the Second Amendment, whether it be Geraldo Rivera, the Daily News. Man, do we have we have a show in store for you. Plus, let's not also forget, forget about a moment of the weekend, Twitter fan. But man, Vito, it is something that we really want to talk about because we, we, where blood is boiling, we're angry, we're upset, not because of the fact that... Well, because of the fact of what went down, but there's more to that than just a situation. There's more to that than just a tragedy. It's the political implications that could possibly arise from this that strips away our rights, that strips away our liberty at the hands of a democratic government and stupid moderate Republicans that are going to go along with him, Vito. Absolutely. And we see the politicizing, you're saying, especially from the New York Daily News, this is not the first time they've done this. We've seen this even with the last shootings, and the New York Daily News has become so much more left. I mean, I don't think they were this bad. More recent times, because I know yeah. my family reads the New York Daily News, but for the front cover, mm-hmm. going out and saying praying doesn't, mm-hmm. you know, praying doesn't fix the problem, mm-hmm. and they showed all a uh, picture of tweets from Ted Cruz and many different Republican candidates uh, sending out prayers. Mm-hmm. Are you kidding me? I find it to be disgusting. Really, Absolutely shaming disgusting. people for sending prayers to yeah. victims of yeah. a shooting because mm-hmm. it's bad. Don't, don't pray for them. What do, what do you want us to say? Well, I mean, when you think about it, a lot of the Republicans are saying our thoughts and prayers. Are with those who passed. And in effect, what the New York Daily News is doing is they're trying to pin people's beliefs, their religious values, against them and say, This is all you Republicans can do. You can't do any more. You don't want to do any more. You don't want to solve the problem. But, Vito, what I never understood about this issue 
is that if Democrats cared just so much for these tragedies, if they care about the implications of what these tra- what's the root cause of these tragedies, they would see that it comes down to two things. One, whether it be Paris, whether it be 9-11. Well, I shouldn't say 9-11 in this instance, but 9-11 could fit into the first example, or the first uh, uh, root cause of why these things are happening. One is Islam, ladies and gentlemen. I got news for you. If indeed, I will say it again, we are not having 100% confirmed facts, but if indeed, if indeed, this is the case, that it's a radical Muslim extremist. Then man oh man are we in trouble. Because that goes to show you that we are not safe here. This is not Fortress America ladies and gentlemen. If indeed it is true. That this guy. Is, is an Islamic extremist. Number one. Whether it be 9-11. The Paris attacks. Uh, the bomb is happening all over the world. What's going on in the Middle East. If that's the case. It's Islam is number one. Number two. And this is related to all local shootings, and now could be tied into possibly terrorism. It's certainly tied in overseas with Paris. It's gun control. It was tied into Canada as well. Remember the Canada shooting, Vito? Yes. Exactly. Gun control is a major issue, and that's what we're going to talk about here tonight, primarily. I want to talk about the disgusting attitude of Democrats towards gun control when they say we need more gun control. We need to have gun control in this country. It's not fair. The president bringing up ridiculous statistics saying that this is the only country we have mass shootings. Completely ignoring the rest of the world. And is quick to politicize an issue and blaming it on global warming. And quick to attack gun control than he is to talk about radical Islamic extremism. He won't call out the name, and he's recently mm-hmm. said it's workplace violence. He's citing this nonsense again, ladies and gentlemen. Workplace violence. Workplace violence. Workplace violence. I, you, just, you can't fathom the stupidity out of this man. I'm sorry. He's the president of the United States. And look, I'm, pr- I'm pretty respectful towards the different office holders. I'll Who's call you congressman. To the office. Yeah. But when you talk about, you know. They're not Barack Hussein Obama. I mean, when you look at a guy like that, you're looking at someone who is just dumb enough to, to, to not look at the facts and not look at the truth and the reality of the situation. He's letting it go by. It's a destruction of the country and it's a destruction of the American people. And, Vito, I got to say, it is absolutely sickening in, in regards to what the president wants to do with gun control. Uh, it's absolutely countless sick. Countless times he calls for more gun control. More gun control, more gun control, and more shootings happening. He says, no, seriously, this time we have to pass something. It's going to happen again. This is the the worst mass sh- shooting since, uh, I believe, Newtown. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. In the last couple of years. He keeps calling for gun control because they think that the stricter it is to get guns, the bad guys obviously aren't going to get guns because they're not allowed to. Let me, let me newsflash. L- listen to this, Vito. Okay, Vito. Did you know that assault rifles are illegal in California? Yes, there is an assault weapons ban in mm-hmm. the state of California, correct. Do you know what weapon did these uh, terrorists or workplace violence people if you listen, use if you in listen, California? If you listen to the news, re- uh, the news reports, they kept saying it wasn't little guns, it was long guns, it was long guns. And I'm like, well, what the hell is a long gun? What are they talking about? What's a sh- what's a little gun and a long gun, a short yeah. gun? It wasn't a water pistol. Yeah, this is an assault rifle. Yeah, that's what they call them, all right? Okay. Long guns are assault weapons and t- typically being assault weapons. Long and gun. little guns or short guns being handguns. And I found it absurd how the media was reporting this because that just goes to show you how the mainstream media wants to go ahead and protect and coax the president, which is really, Vito, discussing towards the, the aspect and the concept of journalism, right. of, of establishing the truth here. Be- because... When you say long guns, people might not click and say those are assault rifles. Right. Doesn't California have an assault rifle ban? They do. How do these people get assault rifles and if they're illegal? Mm-hmm. Oh, no. But luckily, there's a few other people in the United States who are a little smarter than that and make the connection that what they really are talking about are assault, these assault rifles. So it does not work. Okay? The bad guys will always find a way to get the guns illegally. And it's not Because just... it, the, the legality part does not affect them. What? If they want to go and kill 20, 30, 40, 100 people, they don't care if they're going to get yeah. the guns legally or not. Good thing it's registered because I have to go kill people now. Yeah, well, I, I just want to hit on this point about the, the notion of gun control and the bad guys and this, this concept of banning guns or having stricter gun control laws. California is certainly an example of where we see this stuff happening mm-hmm. with strict gun control laws. Chicago is another example. Absolutely. Highest murderer in the country. Highest murder rate in the consistently. country consistently Chicago with that douche mayor Rob Emanuel 
You can say that on radio, can you? I don't think so. Well, we're saying it anyway. <laughs> and find us if you're at the FCC. You have the beep button, right? Huh? You have the bleep button. Oh, yeah, by the way, ladies. Start using that. Yeah, we're using a new setup here tonight. Listen to this. <laughs> yeah, we got a little beep button. It's going to be great. <laughs> yeah, which you didn't use. <laughs> but either way, Vito, I mean, it's some crazy stuff going on. Real some crazy stuff. But when you take a look, you got these states, not just in the United States, but go around the world. Mm-hmm. Go around the world. And then, what are you looking at? Excuse me, but what are you looking at? You're looking at countries that are like this. I'm talking about countries, ladies and gentlemen. You're talking countries like Paris and Australia. Most of Europe have weapon bans. Yet ISIS or other Islamic groups are able to get weapons left and right. You said it before, they don't care about legality, they're caring about accomplishing their ends. And they don't really care with the means of getting those guns, so provided mm-hmm. they can carry out the mission. And this logic is consistent, because if you look at drugs, let's take, for example, marijuana. Okay. Right? Many states, marijuana is illegal. Yeah. Which means you cannot have marijuana on your person. Yes. Okay? Yeah. But does that stop a lot of people from possessing marijuana? Uh, no. The correct answer is no. Of course not. Okay, especially in New York, these more liberal states, with you know they're starting to take that the ban off now. But you see, still many people still get the drugs, still get the guns, still smuggle it. Things still happen. Yep. Last week, one of the forget about it moments was a woman got caught smuggling a handgun in her vagina. <laughs> okay, these people don't have to do ridiculous things You're if right. it was legal. If you can actually use your Second Amendment. You're right, and and, and I want to talk about that. I know it's a forget about it, but I want to bring it up now. Because it's so premier to the issue. I want to talk about Geraldo Rivera and his comments on the Second Amendment. Mm-hmm. Might have to do some work over the commercial break, by the way, Vito. Of going back and finding a new forget about a moment of the week. Great. But either way, I want to talk about Geraldo Rivera. And I want to talk about this ridiculous statement he made. Vito, what did he say? He said the Second Amendment is stupid. He said the Second Amendment is stupid. Here's an American citizen who, by the way, Vito... Mm-hmm. Thanks to the Second Amendment, all the other rights are enforced and are protected. Yes. Because if I just write down a bunch of rights and then just say, well, hey, talk about it amongst yourselves. Who protects the Constitution? That big <laughs> Leviathan is going to come and eat me alive. You're right. Who protects the Constitution? Patriots. Patriots. Armed patriots. That's right. Because it's just a piece of paper, mm-hmm. honestly. But it's enforced through the Second Amendment. Okay? You're right. You're 100% right. So there you go. Geraldo Rivera making a statement, using his First Amendment rights to berate the, 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 the amendment, that is, I think, superior to all because that's the amendment that actually puts these things into perspective. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That is your practicality of the Constitution. I love how people talk about the ideal. Oh, it's good It's good in theory or it's good uh, idealistically, but in practice it can't work. Uh, in, in reality, it's something different. Let's talk about reality, they say. They always put these two issues mm-hmm. together. They put the, 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 the ideal, the, 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 the theoretical schools against the reality, the pragmatic and the, the practical schools. I hated how this issue comes about because, and they say the Constitution is non-practical, or they'll say the First Amendment is good uh, in, in theory, or the Second Amendment is good in theory. It's all nonsense because this Constitution had, was written for the sole purposes mm-hmm. of being a practical and ideal document. Right. And it was written on the basis, which Democrats don't understand, by the way, and pro-gun control Republicans, they don't understand that this issue is, in and of itself, the Constitution is a practical and idealistic document. These two things go together. You're not going to enforce the ide- the idealism of the Constitution mm-hmm. and state sovereignty and freedom of speech and all those other great things in the Constitution unless you have some type of enforcement behind that. That's what makes government government, and practically that is the reason why we have a Constitution today not being followed like it should be, but certainly being... People wanting to protect that Second Amendment practical right. reasoning for that Constitution. People like Geraldo Rivera and the other the left who who say we don't need the Second Amendment or say it's outdated, these popular arguments. Yeah. And by the way, I, hear just, it all the time. I don't mean to interject, but it starts with uh, Richard Wilson who starts that notion that the Constitution is outdated. So yeah. it is not a new phenomenon. It He's starts, the worst president. Oh, absolutely. It starts all the way back with Woodrow Wilson, president who created the Fed. But go ahead. We can get much more details about <laughs> good old Woodrow. But... You know, I, we go to college campuses, Vito, and we always hear the left, they love to attack the Second Amendment because it's outdated, it's for hunting, or this and that. You don't want, people don't understand Muskets. the real reason for the Second Amendment. It's not so you can go out and hunt some squirrel and deer and quail with Dick Cheney. 
Okay. <laughs> or another human being. <laughs> okay. Wasn't it Dick Cheney who, who yeah, shot? Yeah, he, he went quail or his hunting lawyer Texas or something? and he accidentally shot his lawyer in the back of the head. Oh, it was Dick Cheney who shot yeah. him. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I forgot the story, but all right. It, that's the joke. <laughs> that's a, but can you? That's when you know a joke isn't funny, when you have to explain it. So, Oh, no, or you're just a little dense. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Maybe our audience will like it, but it is what it right. is. Go ahead, explain right. this. Anyway, the point of the Second Amendment is for protection, not just mm-hmm. protecting yourself, but from the government. Okay, so let's read the Second Amendment, because to me, this is the most clear, mm-hmm. specific amendment there is. Next to the third. Right. I'm still <laughs> waiting to plead the third. <laughs> Go ahead. Ready? A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Mm-hmm. Shall not be infringed. Mm-hmm. That means no gun should be banned. Okay? You should be able to have your guns because it shall not be infringed. Yeah, I, think, well, I think I'm saying that right. But now people say, oh, but that's for a, re- a well-regulated militia. Well, what's a militia? I'll be the liberal. What's a militia? Ready? Man. I, I will teach you. <laughs> Education. Okay. A militia. <laughs> this is the official definition. I don't make these things up, kids. A militia is an army or other fighting unit that is composed of non-professional fighters and citizens of a nation or subjects of a state. Subjects of a state or citizens happen to be you and I. Okay? That's a well-regulated militia. Mm-hmm. Being necessary for the security of a free state. Now, sometimes in English, you can switch parts of a sentence, and it still makes sense because... Being necessary for the security of a free state, you need a well-regulated militia. Exactly. And that's, that's what you need. But that's... To keep the security of your state. Yes. So the government doesn't take away your rights. Because how can they take away your rights? Through coercion. With guns. Yes, and you're right. And that goes back to what I said before about the practical and the ideal. How people like to put these two things together. It's necessary for the ideal to take place. And that's the philosophical argument behind... The Constitution, ladies and gentlemen, or the Second Amendment in particular. Mm -hmm. And you hit on it, Vito. You hit on it perfectly. I didn't know you were this smart. It's actually very attractive. Well, I'm I'm, (laughs) I'm reading off the teleprompter. (laughs) Don't don't flatter yourself. But my favorite part, it says the right right of the people to keep and bear arms. So you have the right to keep and and bear arms Mm -hmm. to be able to form a militia Mm -hmm. like the Minutemen. Mm -hmm. Remember this in history class during the Revolution? Well, they don't teach the Minutemen now, Vito. Now they teach about the Indians, how they were abused, and Columbus is a bad man. Right. I'll forget about so, that. And the atomic bomb was uh, immoral. Remember all yeah, this is what they teach sure, us in school. Sure. Pearl Harbor is fine, right? <laughs> and the security should have sucked it up. Go ahead. <laughs> the security of a free state to keep us free, we need to bear arms. Shall not be infringed. So when the Safe Act is being passed in New York by uh, Lefty uh, Andrew Cuomo, yeah. And it says you have to register your gun. It, mm-hmm. it cannot be infringed because wait a second. Let's follow this logic. I love this. Apparently, it's racist, and you're infringing people's right to vote. By requiring people to show ID. Well, that's the voter ID argument. Right. From the left. But it's not restricting your right to own a gun if you have to register it. Oh, that's a perfect And go through all these background checks and this and that. Mm -hmm. And yada, yada, yada. I get true that. You get a round of applause for that. Be proud of yourself. Thank you. That's a great argument. That is a great argument. Yeah, it is. But liberals don't use logic. No, they it's don't. An, liberal logic is an oxymoron. <laughs> Used by the morons. Well, good point there. Okay? Good this point. is a very clear, very clear, because it, it says shall not be infringed. Mm-hmm. It specifically says. I don't think any other amendment specifically says you shall not touch this. Mm-hmm. This is very important. Yeah, I know. This is where the Second Amendment is the most important. It is. Okay? And I think we're looking at this on two different issues, and they're both valid points, by the way. Uh, I love it how, it's, how you, just, you cannot talk about that issue. Without first mentioning the practical and ideal argument that I think is perfect, by the way. And that's copyright of Vito and Vito. So don't go out there. I'm stealing our work. <laughs> that's pretty good. So it's necessary. It's already in the Second Amendment. And then what Vito said in terms of how uh, it, it shall not be infringed. That's such an important element of the Constitution. Such an important element of the Second Amendment. Yet people don't want to talk about it, Vito. They don't want to talk about it. And, and, and I find it to be something absolutely disgusting. I find to be absolutely disgusting. Absolutely. And you can dive in, not just the protection of the states. You can say, fine. You can maybe keep your guns in your house then, if you want to protect. 
and everything. But there's so many different reasons why the Second Amendment is so important that Geraldo Rivera does not understand. Well, I want to talk more about Geraldo Rivera. I also want to go ahead and talk more about this issue. And I want to talk about what the President of the United States, plus what possibly Islam has to do with this issue. But man, the Vito and Vito show just getting started. Don't go anywhere. When we return, more Vito and Vito right after this. Who might you save? Your mother, your father, your husband, uncle, aunt, son. Learn fast. F-A-S-T. The sudden signs of a stroke and you could save. Your friend, teacher, boss. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. F-A-S-T. That's F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. The sooner they get to the hospital, the sooner they'll get treatment. And that can make a remarkable difference in the recovery of... Your neighbor, the waiter, grandmother, grandfather. So learn F-A-S-T, the sudden signs of a stroke. Then pass it on, because you never know who might save you. Your wife, your colleague... Spot a stroke fast. Visit strokeassociation.org. Brought to you by the American Stroke Association and the Ad Council. Hey, Vito. Hey, Vito. There's a movement in healthcare today. It's a movement of people that's ready to stand up and take charge of their healthcare. It's people like you and me who are tired of paying too much for healthcare and getting too little. People who are standing up for their values and letting their conscience make decisions based on timeless principles. It's a movement that's sweeping the nation, and you need to be a part of it. Liberty Healthshare is leading the movement of people who are looking for an alternative to traditional health insurance. Liberty Healthshare is a healthcare sharing organization of people who are sharing the cost of health care in an easy and efficient way. Choose your own doctor, your own hospital, and live out your values in health care. Join the movement. Together, we're changing health care for good. Go to www.joinlhs.com or call 800-722-8041. That's 800-722-8041. And we're back here on the Vito and Vito show. Check out the website www.vitoandvito.com. Give us a follow, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Vito and Vito show. That's right, the Vito and Vito show to college age students, conservative, libertarian. That's what you're finding right here, and that's what you're listening to, and we love you for it, baby. Check out the website, by the way, for network <laughs> listings when you can find more and uh, where you can hear us. Again, follow us. On Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Vito and Vito Show. Be sure to listen to the show anytime at www.vitoandvito.com or on our Spreaker page. Go to the website. All right, Vito. So we're talking about the issue in San Bernardino. Mm-hmm. After the, the terrible tragedy that went down, uh, we're talking about gun control and how the left politicizes this issue to the highest degree. And, and it's really something that we got to talk about. I mean, you got some more points on this that I want to hear. Uh, Geraldo Rivera, by the way, coming out with statements earlier today, earlier this week, saying how uh, the Second Amendment is stupid. The Second Amendment is stupid. Yep. And we had a great segment earlier on in the show. But, I mean, they, they, this is an issue that the left doesn't seem to get their head around. And it's been going on and on and on for years. Right. And aside from what we mentioned, the Second Amendment, the point is to protect the people against a uh, tyrannical government. Uh, for example, what we see today because I'll make this comparison, I've done this before. Mm-hmm. If you look at the revolution, they were going to war because, first, because they were taxing tea, right, Vito? Yes. And many different taxes and stuff like that. And they, they revolted against the crown, right? Huge revolutionary war. Then in the Civil War, you saw a few bills being passed that restricted states' rights, right, in the 1860s? Mm-hmm. And there was a Civil War. Today, if you make the comparison... We have lost so many more rights than people have in America years ago that led to war. So I'm just saying. Are you advocating a revolution on this program? I'm just saying. I'm uh, making the comparison. <laughs> no comments. Uh-huh. Okay? But if our founding fathers were living around today's times, they would have picked up arms years ago. I, I can't really dispute that. But it's certainly an interesting point to make. I'll give you that much, ladies and gentlemen. But when it comes down to it, uh, you know, your rights are being affected, ladies and gentlemen. The left just seeks to take them away from you mm-hmm. over and over again. But I know President Obama and the left bring up the same old gun control arguments, so I want to bring them up here on the show and give you some ammo, some intellectual ammo to shoot them down. 
uh, in, in, in the realm of ideas. So let's start off with the first argument where they talk about gun shows and loopholes, right? We hear this all the time about gun shows and loopholes that there are still, uh, when you go to a gun show, you can purchase a gun without it being registered. Uh, and if the gun's not registered, then you can go ahead and, and it's a loophole and it's not registered. The government can't track it and they can't take away your rights or, or they can't track the bad guys, they say. Well, here's an argument that I have up against this point. First of all, yeah, if you're a gun dealer going to a gun show, by law, you have to have a gun sh- If you have a table there, if you're selling guns at a gun show, you have to have it registered. Nobody, can, I can, me and you just can't walk out of the house one day, go to a gun show and just set up a table without that table being registered, without our business, if you will, being registered with the government. Say if it's wrong or right, but that's the law. So Democrats either A, don't know the law, or B, are trying to lie to you, which mm-hmm. I'm going to go ahead and go with maybe A and B. <laughs> a handful of A and a good chunk of B. And I'll add on to that, like, I'll to use Rand Paul's quote, I don't want my guns or marriages registered in Washington. No, oh, absolutely. Why does the government need to register your guns? Mm-hmm. Because if you go crazy, they can track the gun and see where you're... No. Nah. Okay? Because they know where you have guns. So let's say if you're going to go plan an attack and you know exactly where people are who are armed, it's obvious that you're going to go attack people who you know who aren't armed. For example, if the United States government decides to invade New York, they know where all the guns are, who's registered with guns. So they're going to go to places like hmm, liberal New York City where most people do not have guns. Mm-hmm. And they will attack those places first, but of course that's unimaginable. The United States government will never attack us. But uh, just like Nazi Germany, never. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, okay, you got it there. Okay. But th- anything can happen. Just remember that. But in regards to the registration issue on, on the registration of guns, which we'll talk about registering guns to the government in just a second, because uh, that's another argument for liberals. But they talk about at, at these gun shows and the lack of of, of registered gun holders and gun manufacturers and carriers and sellers and dealers or whatever. Well, if you're at a gun show, their concern, this is where the loophole, if you will, that I guess they're trying to get at and allude to is that you can make a deal with somebody. I can meet somebody at a gun show, say you and I never met before. I walk up to you and say, hey, man, you want to buy my gun? And you come up to me and say, yeah, here, here's my number. Call me afterwards because we don't have to deal with this gun control crap. And then we would do the deal on the side and we would go ahead and you'd come to my house. I'd sell you the gun for a price and then the transaction would occur. Mm, Sounds like drugs. Yeah, well, it does. You're doing it on the ground, according to the government. And as a result, the government's going to say that's not a registered gun. So what are we getting at here, basically? That's what the Democrats are really trying to hit on and some pro-gun control Republicans. But here's the issue with that. How the hell are you going to enforce that loophole? It's impossible. What, are you going to track everybody and send everybody to their homes after a gun show and just interview them and scrutinize them under a lamp to see if their guns are registered, to see if they're going to go ahead and sell their guns to somebody they met at a gun show? I mean, just break this down, Vito. Common sense-wise, how do Democrats intend to carry carry out these ends, what means are they going to take? What are they going to do? This is the loophole argument I don't understand. They're going to set up another Mm -hmm. barrier for people to go ahead and purchase a gun. It's going to make it ten times easier for somebody to walk into a gun-free zone and shoot it up like they did in California and shoot up like they did in Newtown and shoot up like they did at a Columbine because those are gun-free zones that have no defense mechanisms. It's some sick stuff, Vito. Absolute sick stuff. Absolutely. 100%. And that's also anti-free market. Regulating if you, oh, so sure. if you want to sell by a gun, it's your Second Amendment right. You should be able to buy and sell what you want. Well, we don't want to go ahead and confuse these two issues. Absolutely, it's anti free market, but that's in terms of pricing and efficiency and how to produce well, those it, guns. It adds to it. It's it's, more than it one does. Issue. It does add to that. But on the other side, we're talking just about the safety of the people. We're talking about uh, people killing one another and stuff like that. How do you prevent that? What's the best option? And I hate it when Democrats say we don't care. Like the New York Daily News putting on the front cover of that right. headline. What was the headline again? Uh, praying is not going to solve the gun control. Yeah, so. something like that. Right, something, something alluding to that. Lines. He's paraphrasing it, but yeah, certainly that's the case. And 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 I gotta say, that's the BS about this issue, Vito. Is that liberals don't want to look at this at, at its core. They don't want to look at what the Second Amendment is, and they don't want to see how how we as Republicans, conservatives, libertarians, anti-gun control people, we're the people that are running out there that honestly care. We're the ones who give a damn about people like this. We're the ones that care about the victims. We care more so than Democrats because we care about the individual less than we do about those who we're going to call gun owners and automatically assume that they're criminals, by the way, which is going to lead us into the registration argument. And those who are the victims, those unarmed people who are just mm-hmm. walking the streets. It's absolute BS because Democrats think more gun control saves lives, but well, we're saying no, less gun control saves lives. And they never want to look at the argument. They just want to attack us right. like the New York Daily News did. And... 
I pulled up the, the New York Daily News. It was the front cover today. It said, God isn't fixing this. Mm-hmm. And it was a few pictures of Ted Cruz, Rand Paul, Paul Ryan, and Lindsey Graham all tweeting, saying their prayers out to the victims of the tragedy. And it says, as latest batch of innocent Americans are left lying in pools of blood, cowards who could truly end gun scour- uh, scourge continue to hide behind meaningless platitude. But, 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 what? First of all, we've got to have the co- coward argument. We kicked that out of the way. But they, look how they phrase that, Vito. A, a batch Pool, of innocent Americans. Yeah, pools of blood. Just a batch of people. Pools of blood. I mean, it's supposed to be this emotional sensationalism out of the mainstream media. And, and <laughs> I mean, it's some crazy stuff. But wait, I thought, shouldn't the media like report objectively what happened in California? Yeah, right. Because reading this, I'm saying, oh, in California, we realize that the Republicans and God hate. Americans and they don't they don't care that they keep getting massacred. I, I you know th- this is a disgusting front cover, front page for the New York Daily News. I mean talk about politicizing. Oh my goodness, immediately. It's disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. And I'm happy a bunch of people have attacked this issue. But I mean, you know, let's talk about this registration argument and I want to switch over to the then after that the Islamic sort of connection. That's going to be something. But let's talk about this ladies and gentlemen. We're talking about uh, how Democrats love to throw out these these gun control arguments. Here's one that we've heard uh, about registration. We need to register more guns and have them registered. Hey, fools, you think that... What about the registered guns that we lost in Fast and Furious? Remember those registered guns? Mm-hmm. Well, how come we can't find those? Oh, that's right, because the government Good messed job. up in trying to register them. Good the job. government cannot register anything. They cannot do anything efficiently. So, ladies and gentlemen, what does that lead you to? Ooh, how about the uh, half a billion weapons that the United States, quote-unquote, lost that apparently Iran found and seized? Oh, there you go. Don't forget about that. We lost half a billion. Okay? Yet the government thinks they could register guns more efficiently on American okay. citizens. They can't even set up a website. You want them to register and control <laughs> this information? They spent a billion dollars on that website, by the way. A billion yeah. dollars. How many times do they get hacked by uh, China and all these different yeah. places that keep yeah. getting hacked? Oh, are you kidding me? This is supposed to be top secret. Extra top, top secret. You know, just like the Benghazi emails and all this other stuff. Yeah, sure. And lo- top Lois secret. Lerner. Please, don't forget yep. Lois Lerner. We can't mm-hmm. forget her. It's absolute nonsense. But and this is just loose things. It's disgusting. Give me a break. This is just some of the arguments I want to have. But hey, I want to go and you know use that for your, your arguments up against the liberals and the left. But I want to talk about the issue going on in terms of Islam and, and, and listen to the political correctness side of this whole issue. Well, the the, the shooters have been identified as Muslims. Uh, they've been apparently uh, it radicalized. Again, it's not concrete yet, but it, certainly the signs are pointing there. They had pipe bombs in their house. It looked like an explosive factory. They came out in military tactical gear, which, by the way, you could get this stuff anywhere. It's not a bad thing. They have this stuff. It's been around for years. So don't even say it. I know the left is going to try to ban, like, you know, special ops goggles or something <laughs> from military hardware stores. I know that's the next argument. But either way, this is the stuff that's been going down. Uh, y- you have this stuff floating around. Uh, by the left about how and, and and the facts going around saying that it's they are Muslims. Uh, he was angry. He came from a Christmas party. He's been radicalized. He was having ties and terrorist groups uh, overseas. He was speaking to known terrorists. Some scary stuff here. You know the signs are pointing mm-hmm. towards radical Islamists, possibly ISIS inspired attacks. Not workplace violence because who goes to a Christmas party? With all this gear and assault rifle saying, you know what? Somebody might piss me off today. Gotta be prepared. And he was there, then he left, and he came back to do the shooting. Oh, uh, well, what happened? Somebody, uh, crapped in his cornflakes? I think he's 20 years old, too. He's a young guy. This isn't workplace violence. Yeah. Uh, by the way, he went to Saudi Arabia. Fun fact for you. Uh, he went to Saudi Arabia, and I think he probably had an arranged marriage, and he came back married. <laughs> oh. Yeah, he went for, like, the summer, got yeah. married, came back with a wife. <laughs> <laughs> you right, believe so things were going well. You believe And this? something went wrong at this Christmas party, apparently. Yeah, you, well, I mean, you know? No maybe, way. This stuff was planned, absolutely. You know what? Maybe they said maybe Christmas and he got offended. Oh, well, we, speaking of getting offended, apparently somebody knew this was going to go down or they had information. Again, conflicting reports. We don't really know. It's still too early to tell. Uh, but you have this stuff floating around that apparently somebody knew that this issue was going on. This was about to happen. This was about to blow up. Uh, that this was going down. And and the reason why the guy, who the witness, who I'm pulling up the name right now, the reason why this person didn't want to go ahead and say that a neighbor 
of the shooters. They didn't want to go ahead and report the issue because, you know, say something, see something, say something, that slogan going around. If mm-hmm. you see something suspicious, say something is going on and try to help the police. And Well, well, guess what? The only reason why he didn't come forward and tell the police that he, he possibly has a hunch that things are going down is because he didn't want to be called racist. He didn't want to be called racist. Political correctness stopped this. Neighbor was suspicious and didn't report for fear of being called racist, you know. There's your polit that see political correctness kills. There you go. Just right there. It kills, ladies and gentlemen. And Islam is not a race, so you can't be racist if you call out Islam or don't like the Muslims. That's not it's not a race. Mm-hmm. That's a fun fact. So not even is it political correctness, it's ignorance on top of political correctness. That's what kills. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, yeah. This is from CBS Los Angeles. As darkness fell, police continued to search the home in Redlands. Officers entered the home with a battering ram and were taking precautions due to a belief that the home could be rigged with explosives. Did you see that video, by the way, of the robot going into the house to try to, like, like a bomb crazy. threat robot? It was something crazy, something out of, like, a sci-fi movie. But anyway, it goes on to say, It was not immediately known whether the Redlands home was owned by Saheed Farouk or his family members, again, the shooter, or his family members. But one neighbor said he noticed that a group of six Middle Eastern men moved onto the street a few weeks ago, but did not file a report as he did not want to appear to be racially profiling his neighbors. Sure enough, ladies and gentlemen, what do you have here? What do you have here? Multiculturalism and political correctness killing innocent Americans because people were afraid to be called racist. Stunning. Absolutely stunning. Unbelievable. And nobody wants to take this issue at its root. Nobody on the left wants to call out why political correctness is such a bad thing. And say what you want about Ben Carson, but he's been fighting against that political correctness thing in his entire presidential campaign. So this is certainly, I think, something that's going to help him. If people say, wow, look, see, Ben Carson's right about political correctness if they were on the fence with him before. But so were other candidates as well. And I think a lot of conservatives and libertarians are just pissed off mm-hmm. about this white privilege mm-hmm. uh, uh uh, political correctness culture that we're living in. Look at the college students marching up and down the streets demanding $15 minimum wages and free college free and free condoms and free, and free birth control and, and free your mother. They want to free everything. They want to free the whole nine yards. And, and when you look at it, Vito, it's some scary stuff because this is what kills us. It kills us to be silent. It kills us not to take proactive measures. And I think it's absolutely scary. Uh, and, and frightening. But there's an issue here. you got to walk a line, Vito. Mm-hmm. How far do you go before violating rights and protecting American citizens? What is what is the breaking point here? What is the breaking point? That's a, that's a tough issue. Are you referring to the Patriot Act? Not the Patriot Act. I'm talking about this notion of... of I mean, if you have two Muslim neighbors that move into your community, what do you well, do? something had to tip it off. Well, six, excuse me, not two, six. Something had to tip it off to this guy other than them being Muslim. Had to. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't go around and say, oh, with a Muslim, they're definitely going to attack San Bernardino today. Mm-hmm. Right? Because it's a little more detailed, okay? You wouldn't come around and say, well, they're a Muslim. I, I'm not surprised they did that. No. This guy knew a little more information. I'm sure You're a did. neighbor. There's something else. Like, listen, I don't know. He's bring, keep bringing these little pipe things into his house, and he brought all these assault rifles and test them out. There, there's something a little more. Okay? So... You cannot be afraid to be called racist or whatever. Please, I'm called racist and so many other things. Oh, I don't care what the daily. left calls me. Let them call whatever they want. But yeah, I want, okay. to read, I want to read this off National Review. I read this article today, and I want to read it, and I want to give the credit to where credit's due. David French's article, San Bernardino Shows the High Cost of Political Correctness, off of Pol- uh, National Review. And it says, let's be clear. If you see something, say something, doesn't violate any person's rights. And there is nothing wrong with acting on a hunch that something feels a bit off. Political correctness has nothing to do with reality, and often the best eyes and ears for law enforcement are the people who know a neighbor and are able to recognize unusual events. It's a good point there, and I think that's actually a pretty good point. If you see something, say something. Don't be afraid to at least tip a law enforcement officer. But at the same time, I don't want people running around saying, hey, we should... You know, that guy looks suspicious, that guy looks suspicious, you're going to create that police state, so there's a fine line you got to walk. What does it mean the police are going to necessarily take strict action and do things, but if you say something looks, something's up, you know, the police keep their eyes open, maybe, you know, yeah. s- you know, they come and say something, do something, look around, doesn't mean they're gonna, you know, break into the house and arrest them. Yeah, and it's, and it's a relatively, you know, there's not a lot of Muslims that live in the neighborhood, so you gotta say, you know, people tend to sociologically stick to their own people. 
It tends to be black neighborhoods and Italian neighborhoods and Irish neighborhoods, and we know this. I mean, it's just it's just apparently it's how people congregate. They're comfortable around their own, if you will. So when you start to see these, these this mixing in a way, is it a bad thing? No, of course it's not a bad thing, but it certainly seems unusual when, when people are a little out of the norm coming into different neighborhoods. Not a bad thing right. to experience different cultures, but the question is, you got six Middle Eastern people moving into a neighborhood, number one. Number two, that is not predominantly Middle Eastern. Number two, you got Islam being, you know, the, the Islamic religion I'm talking about now, with its horrific ideas, its bad ideas being propagated all around the world, whether it be by ISIS, Boko Haram, Al-Qaeda, the Taliban, whatever terrorist group you want. All in the Middle Eastern countries, all governed by Sharia law. It's apparently a pretty big deal. So when you start to see Muslims, you got to ask them. And you got to be mean about it. And I'm not saying all Muslims are terrorists or hold these beliefs. But if you ask them to defend their beliefs when it comes down to Sharia law or the life mm-hmm. of Muhammad, hear what they have to say. And sometimes they get caught in a little conundrum. So you're going to see that issue is going to arise later on eventually. So you got all these red flags going around, plus the recent events in Paris and etc. So you got to take some precautions, and I think that is something that as Americans we got to find a way to walk that tight line, that tight rope between rights and security. We cannot trump rights for security. That's nonsense. Everyone knows it that that is not the way to fly. We cannot be doing stuff like that. And again, as a libertarian, I'm also concerned about the safety of Americans. So again, it's a fine line, a fascinating debate. My mind isn't made up completely, but it's, I'm just putting the ideas out there for you to decide. Listen, when we return here to the Vito and Vito show, we're going to talk about some forget about it moments of the week, plus Twitter fan, and some more San Bernardino shootings when we return right here on the Vito. Fighting the Common Core Standards? Need a powerful tool to help inform others on this harmful education initiative? You're covered with Common Ground on Common Core, the collection of essays by 20 top education experts and activists. Reviewers call it the best single resource on the topic. You can share it with literally anyone. Order your print or digital copy of Common Ground on Common Core today. Just visit resoundingbooks.org. That's resoundingbooks.org. And get $2 off when you tell them Vito and Vito sent you. Paid for by Resounding Books Pack. So what is Behind Enemy Lines anyway? This is the true story of two friends living in the People's Republic of New York City who work together and have their conversations taped to find out what happens when conservatives stop being politically correct and start getting real. We are Behind Enemy Lines. Watch your wallets. Thursdays at 1 on WNJC, part of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. Check out the website Vito and Vito.com and Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram and all social media, including MySpace. I think we have <laughs> MySpace. Head out Telegram up, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> at Vito and Vito Show. Make sure you follow us there. That's right. We share the links for all our shows. Check out the network listings because when we're broadcasting, we want you to listen. Well, not really. Well, I can do I can do without you, ladies and gentlemen. Well, one a few of you. <laughs> we'll pick and choose. You want to laugh? Because I'm a big fan of the classics. So Johnny Carson ones. I'm gonna. I'm, I gotta throw this out here. Okay. I've been watching old Johnny. I was up late last night and Johnny. Watch Carson. Watching, listening to the vinyl. Johnny, <laughs> Johnny, Johnny Carson reruns are on TV. So I'm watching it and I think it's Don Rickles who's with him, one of my favorite comedians. And he turns around. Don Rickles turns to Johnny Carson and says, "Go ahead, Johnny. Spit on the camera with all the money you have. Tell these people you don't need them." <laughs> so. You realize we just lost all young listeners. All young listeners? Well, well, screw them. They don't know who Johnny Carson is. I don't really want them listening anyway. <laughs> Johnny Carson, a hero. <laughs> uh, he, Don Rickles, for Christ's sake. Don Rickles, by the way, I said this before, I'll say it again. And even Johnny Carson and all the old cool comedians like Ronnie Dangerfield and Eddie Murphy and Red Fox. Oh, my God. None of these guys Carrot would have <laughs> Carrot, well, well, none of these guys would have survived today's political correctness culture. Well, Don Rickles is still going. I know. And he got in trouble for calling President Barack Obama back in 2012. Mm-hmm. He said a joke about President Obama. He said, yeah, I invited President Obama over for dinner the other night, but the mop broke. 
you know, implying that the president or black people mop floors. And again, it's all out of love and, you know, it's just basing it on stereotypes that a lot of black people used to be slaves or a lot of black people used to be uh, uh, housewives. And, but it's or, all or, a joke. We don't hate black people. Yeah, okay. it's, it's nonsense. I mean, if you're saying that's, oh, that's racist, that's offensive, that's BS. You see the sweat, and he wouldn't survive today, and a lot of great comedy would die at the hands of political correctness. Did you see the sweater in Target, by the way? It's a sweater in Target. It said OCD, and it was an acronym. Uh, I'm going to look it up for you. Uh, but it was an acronym, uh, the OCD t- sweater at Target. And a, a bunch of people got real crazy. They're like, oh, my God, take that, off of the, uh, uh, take that off the shelves right now. That's offensive to me. I have OCD. Like, a lot of people were, were angry at what was going down. I mean, this is, just the, this is the issue that we're living in right now. Oh, it, it, it stands for Obsessive Christmas Disorder. OCD, it's a sweater selling in Target. It's in one of those ugly sweaters. Mm-hmm. And it said obs- OCD, and under it it says Obsessive Christmas Disorder. And they wanted uh, um, Target to take it down. A bunch of, it blew up on Twitter, and they said they don't care about people with OCD. It's offensive. Shut up. Come on. Really, shut up. Shut up. <laughs> I, I can't make this stuff up. You know, these people are just absurd and ridiculous. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Unbelievable, but I mean, we got some issues here with gun control. I know you got something to say before we get to our forget about it moments of the week, which will break down for you. But I know you got some stuff in comparison to other countries with gun control. <laughs> because we hear the liberals, especially in school, you seem so college. prepared. He sat there for a moment, completely up. And you said over the break, you said over the break, I want to go with this. I said, you know what, Vito, you said your I, show. I have a few other things to say. I say a lot of things about gun control, but I wanted to follow the script and the, the damn teleprompter and go forget about it. But well, we I'll don't say, go with I'll the I'll teleprompter. Great. Go ahead. Good Let's, job, Johnny. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to break. Bye. <laughs> go ahead. All the liberals on, on college campus who talk about gun control a lot, and they always, oh, people always compare the United States to other countries, especially with health care and gun control. Mm-hmm. But they always bring up England. How there's so few shootings in England. But they never look at the reasons why. Because being smart, intellectuals, you usually question and say why. You find out reasons why things happen. In England, there are virtually no guns. There aren't many guns in England. And the population is also dramatically smaller than the United States. Okay, The United States is around 330 million people. England is definitely below 100. I know that for a fact. So, when you look at the statistics, there's a lower number in England. Well, because, one, there's a lower population, and, two, there are no guns there. Mm. The police officers don't even use guns. Yeah. It's only okay. reserved for the high level of government. Right. So, look at the United States, where there are guns. Sorry, there's nothing you can do about that. There are guns in our culture. Mm-hmm. Okay? Second Amendment's been around for a long time. People have guns. Okay? With our Second Amendment right, because, listen, in the... English Bill of Rights in 1689 that is a fundamental right of self-defense is being able to bear arms. So this is not just the United States. So we can you can compare to every other country in the world and you gotta compare the stats but you know just be aware where the stats are coming hey, from a- and what they really a- mean. Absolutely, that's a great point. And I just want to make this point too about Bernie Sanders and the left. Uh, Bernie Sanders and the left loves to talk about the, the Scandinavian countries. The Scandinavian countries. Ooh, look at Scandinavia. We've got to be more like them. We've got to be like Norway and the rest of these stuff. Uh, and, and Switzerland and stuff like that. Sweden. A lot of the Scandinavian countries, FYI, have some of the laxest gun control laws in the entire world. Plus, they also have some of the most free market economies, by the way. Uh, they have a welfare state that's going to cripple them. But they are, they're certainly on a better track when it comes down to, to picking and, and cherry-picking principles when it comes down to free markets. If you look at the Heritage Foundation's, I think, report on, on free markets, they're actively pretty much up there. Uh, yeah, the Scandinavian, who would have thought, the Scandinavian countries. But even on gun control as well. So before the left starts to talk about other countries, they should look at the facts before they go any further. Hey, listen, it's that time of the week again, that time of the week again. Forget about what? it. Moment. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Boy, forget about it. That's right, forget about it, moments of the week. And I got an honorary mention right now. Before we go any further, let's describe what that is. Uh, forget about it, moments <laughs> of the week. saying it the whole show. Forget about it, moments of the week, when we take a break from the political situation and we talk about some crazy things going down in the world. We're talking about some of the craziest stories you've ever heard. We got three of them for you every week here on the Vito and Vito show. And I want to break down just some forget about it moments. It's a saying we have here in Brooklyn, New York. When something goes out of hand, the first thing you say is, oh my god, forget about it. Let's break it down. And here's my honorary mention. I was looking on Instagram before, and I saw a picture. During the show. During the show. (laughs) On the National Review Instagram post. 
and it's a picture of Donald Trump, Donald Trump signing some woman's breast. Nice. <laughs> okay. And I liked it on the official Vito Vito <laughs> show. I want to do that. Yeah, and, and you know what? He's signing her breast. So the man's a rock star. I got to give him the credit where it's due. Don't know if I choose him for president of the United States, but <laughs> I have to say. It made the forget about it moment. It made the forget about it moment. Vito, what's that forget about it moment of the week? Uh, a man in India mm-hmm. was stoned to death by monkeys. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I, you know, you just you can't make this stuff up. You just can't. You cannot make this stuff up. Apparently, That's he was absurd. doing like garden work in his front of his house, and these monkeys, like an army of monkeys, jumped on top of his house and started throwing rocks at him until uh, he died of his injuries. No, they weren't monkeying around. <laughs> <laughs> we got a little. Wow. We got a laugh track here. I'm gonna utilize. That's great. It. We're gonna utilize. <laughs> Since we can't hear the live audience laughing at us, <laughs> we'll make can't. we'll make one up. What's that second? Forget about it. Moment of the week. In California, they issued an, a warning um, in Novato, California, about attacking squirrels. These, okay, so what's these, the problem? These squirrels are attacking people. Oh, the squirrels are attacking. What is it, like yeah. the Vito and Vito shows? Forget about it. Moments of the week. Animal gun. Well, uh, animal gun <laughs> wild. Animal, uh, animal porn. This is that's what it is. This is so, yeah, this is so- <laughs> <laughs> the BCLE moments of the week. Easy there, but uh, that's abs- that's ridiculous. <laughs> That's easy. Controlling yourself. That's ridiculous. People are worried about attacking squirrels. This is what's going down in the world, huh? Attacking squirrels and attacking monkeys. What else do we got? What's our next forget about? The Wizard of Oz with the monkey. (laughs) Hey, do you know the Wizard of Oz? The Wiz is on this week, by the way. Uh, It's um, it's it's a rerun. They're doing a live version. Queen Latifah is in it, and a bunch of other people. Uh, And it's the Wiz. Is that uh, which, the, the Black, black Wizard of Oz? Yeah, the Black version of the Wizard of Oz. They should make an Italian version. Yeah, of who? Of hey, Wizard Vito and Vito go down to visit Dorothy. <laughs> I would Send it back to one. Kansas. Send it an a, Asian one. An Asian one? Yeah, why not? Hey, you got to be kidding me. Come on, don't why? make me do this. What, why? Don't make me do this. I'm not making you do anything. I'm just pointing out why the black black people have to oh, make one. Oh, no! <laughs> She's uh, gone. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> oh, then she can fight people. Like she could kung fu. Everybody was kung fu. Like fighting the trees. You know when the trees throw you, apples? Okay. Where's the beep button? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Just like, we're going to probably bleep out all of that. <laughs> Why? You political correct junkie, you. That's what you are. Quick, quick junkie. Yeah, I'm throwing things in the studio. I'm angry. Unbelievable. I'll say what I want. When I want. How I want. How I want. <laughs> I'm just saying. We Regardless should, of what I'm wearing. We should make more Wizard of Oz spinoffs, just like the black community is. <laughs> How come they get a rebase? How come we Why? Get a Why? Why? Huh? What is that? He's making a point. Good point. Yes. Yeah. You realize that, it, like, it, it's... You can say black power, but you can't say white power. I can't believe I'm going here, but if you think about it, I mean, you really can. You can't really say... And I'm not advocating any power. I mean, I... I think race is a ridiculous well, issue. We're talking about political correctness. Yeah, I think race is a ridiculous issue in and of itself. Black power, white power. I mean, you're all a bunch of fools if you start running around saying black power, white power. There's white no, power. Nah, no power. Fight the government because you want your rights back. But it doesn't matter. Black, white, gay, straight, lesbian, oh, uh, 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 black, Italian, Jew, Irish, Asian. Who gives a crap? An American is an, a person is a person. And they have life, liberty, and property rights. And that's what libertarians and conservatives want to mm-hmm. fight about. And that's what we're fighting for. Is the rights of the individual, uh, not black rights or gay rights. There's no such thing as those rights because they don't exist. And, and I like to make fun of these little things because <laughs> they don't exist. Rights exist. They're concepts that preserve freedom. Next, forget about it, moment of the week. Uh, you already took this one. You used it early in the show. But Geraldo Rivera says the second memo is stupid. Yeah, he's stupid. Yes, he is. I got to say, though, he has a nice mustache. Whatever. What? <laughs> you don't like his mustache? The, the people at Fox do it for him. The people... <laughs> <laughs> they trip his mustache. Hell yeah, in between commercial breaks. You think they do it here too for us? Well, I don't. Well, I have a. I got this beard looking thing if you want to call I'd it. I'd say clean shaven. Do you? Yes. Yeah, what are you like? Uh, you have a little sideburns growing there, Elvis. I see that. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, like Engelbert Humperdinck. All right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you talking about, talking about me losing our audience, our young audience. Oh, my goodness. We just lost a bunch of. God knows millennials, and we just Wait, picked up If you can tweet at us who Angle Bird Humperdinck is, we'll give you a $100 gift card to VitoVito.com. <laughs> <laughs> we don't sell anything. <laughs> okay, let's forget about it because you took the other one. Okay. A new Fox poll shows that 97% of people in America don't care about global warming. Oh, thank God. But the 3% happen to be Marxists who live at Brooklyn College <laughs> and hear about it nonstop. <laughs> FYI. <Okay. laughs> They're all here. Brooklyn College being the home of Bernie Sanders. You're, you're Bernie current Sanders. college. 
college. Dude. My, when I go to school, yeah. these people are teaching me what they taught Bernie Sanders, Reverend Al Sharpton, <laughs> yeah. and Barbara Boxer. But by the way, Reverend Al dropped that. So, <laughs> oh well, because he hit a big. <laughs> I hope it on Fox here. <laughs> Because they hate me there. They hate me at Brooklyn College. <laughs> I'm racist. Oh, yeah, my goodness. Everybody's racist. They can't believe how stupid I am and how I made it this far in college. And honestly, I don't know either. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I did it. So I'm, ready, I'm ready to drop out. <laughs> oh, well, come on. Please. Stay in with me. Come on. You could do it. Yeah, my, I'll transfer to St. Francis for you. Oh, that's a little small college. A little small liberal arts college here in Brooklyn, New York. Well, you got some commies that run around. Yeah, who's the head of your department. Well, that's true. That's true. <laughs> Got some, but I like going back and forth. It always makes for good spirited debate. All right, whatever. Let's end the show, man. I gotta go. Yeah, I think. Yeah. What do you have to do? I have uh, people Put to see. I've, 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 let's see a man about a horse. You got- <laughs> about a you, monkey. You gotta go. <laughs> and a stone. Make sure he doesn't throw rocks <laughs> at you. You gotta go. Put on some pants. Listen, the Vito and Vito show signing off right here. Check out the website, www.vitoandvito.com. Give us a follow on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Vito and Vito Show. Because from the Animal War of the Empire State Building. Because we can't afford the first floor. The Vito and Vito Show, signing off in Brooklyn. It's nothing but the truth. The leader in talk radio on the internet. Right here on K98talk.com. When our water heater broke down last month, it was a nightmare. It took five hours for the plumber to show up, and he charged us a couple of hundred bucks just to come out. And then it cost another $1,800 to put in the new water heater. By the time it was all said and done, I felt like I'd been taken. But what else could I do? The smartest thing you can do is get a home warranty from American Residential Warranty. Their home warranties pay to repair or replace all your major appliances when they break. And they will break. And at the worst possible time, call American Residential Warranty right now for free information on home warranties starting at just pennies a day. Don't wait for your refrigerator to stop running or your ceiling fans to stop turning. Call American Residential Warranty right now. Ask how you can save up to 50% on wash and dryer coverage. Just call 1-800-513-6154. That's 1-800-513-6154. Again, 1-800-513-6154. Call now. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable everyday carry or a tough as nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. In these uncertain economic times, you've got to do whatever you can to save money. One of our biggest expenses can be our cars, especially when unexpected repair bills hit. Not anymore. If you own a vehicle with less than 130,000 miles, is less than 12 years old, has a warranty about to expire, or even no warranty at all, you could stop paying for car repairs. Roadside assistance, towing, and rental coverage are all included. Don't wait for the next repair. Make one free call right now to see if you qualify. If your 
vehicle is less than 12 years old, has less than 130,000 miles, even if it's out of warranty, paying for car repairs can become a thing of the past. Call us right now and get your car protected before your next repair bill hits. Get protection and no more repair bills. Call 800-696-1030. Again, 800-696-1030. That's 800-696-1030. 800-696-1030. All right, folks, this is Rick Robinson with you. I want to tell you about some friends of mine from a company called Security Enforcement Specialists. When I ran my security agency for 12 years, I worked with one of these partners on a daily basis. He's been involved in this agency now, and with his other partner, they do have over 30 years of experience in the private security industry. If you own a business and you need someone to keep you or your customers or residents safe, then I highly recommend contacting Security Enforcement Specialists today. Give them a call at 405-703-1796. Again, that's 405-703-1796. Again, tell them Rick from K98 Talk sent you. Like I said, if you need the help, they are here for you, so make sure that you uh, go look them up, check them out, and see what they can do. Wrong way! Welcome to the Joe had huge problems with the IRS. I knew it was coming. I hadn't filed taxes since 1990. All the IRS letters coming in added up to a nightmare. It got up to like $68,000. My heart started beating fast. It's like, there's no way, man. I mean, I ain't going to be able to do this. Then they stopped his paycheck. So that's when I started making phone calls and found U.S. Tax Shield. U.S. Tax Shield went to work immediately. They just took the bull by the horns. What blew my mind is he called the IRS right then and there. So why is U.S. Tax Shield A plus rated with the Better Business Bureau? Joe knows. They saved me a ridiculous amount of money. If you owe more than ten thousand dollars to the IRS or state, choose the company Joe chose. U.S. Tax Shield. It was the best decision I made. U.S. Tax Shield is the way to go. Life is good. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Call eight hundred four seven one thirty two eighty seven. U.S. Tax Shield. Boo raw. Yes. <laughs> The internet will never be the same. You're listening to K98talk.com. 